Hi everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog and today we're taking a look at the HomePod Mini with some beginners tips and tricks and how to use the HomePod in general and then some more advanced fun and just interesting tips and tricks towards the middle and the end. So I think this should be a good video. So quite simply, when you have your HomePod, you can control it from your iPhone in several ways, as well as from the speaker itself. So holding down the middle is going to activate Siri, but then you can also use the voice command and say, hey, blank, which I won't say it so I don't trigger it on your devices. Then you also have your volume buttons up and down, which you can either tap or hold. And you can also tell Siri to increase or decrease your volume on a scale from one to a hundred. So you can say, send it to 50 for halfway volume. And you can also say percentage wise. So send it 20% higher. Now from your phone itself, and this is my iPhone 12 mini, you can control it in several ways. So if you're in the music app, you tap the little airplay button at the bottom or from any media app, you press the airplay button. And then you should see an option at the bottom for speakers and TVs. And for me, I can see HomePod Mini here. And I can tap that and it will send that audio to the HomePod Mini. You can see there it says HomePod Mini up at the top. Uh, but if you don't want that, you can go ahead and switch back to iPhone. Now you can also control this from your control center. So up here you can see the control center option. If you swipe down on the iPhone 10 style phones or swipe up on the iPhone 8 and iPhone SC style phones and you click the AirPlay button and you have the same options. Now if you have multiple HomePods in your house, you're going to be able to see and control them from a panel that you'll be able to slide up and down right here. Again, this is from control center and then this option right here and you'll be able to see your options. So this is HomePod mini. And then if you have multiple HomePods, you can actually do stereo pairing by selecting multiple of them with these dots to the right hand side. But I only have one here to show you today. Now, if you wanna customize your HomePod and change up the settings, you're gonna go into the Home app primarily, and then you should see the accessory and you can play and pause by tapping on it, or you can hold it and then you get into the settings. So including a media player, which again is pretty similar to the music app. And then you can swipe up and down for settings, which you can change where it is uh, what room it's in, whether you want it to be in your favorites or not, a couple other automation settings and you can add to that, what account you want it to be on, whether or not you allow explicit content, update listening history, that means that this device will change and affect your Apple Music recommendations, listen for the command. Now another way to customize this is if you click the home and then home settings and then here you have more options. If you click your profile, you'll get some more options including changing what your default media type is, so for instance, if you have Pandora installed, you could select Pandora here in your uh, default media instead of Apple Music. So when you ask Siri to play a song, it'll go to that app instead of Apple Music. So next, let's get into the more fun tips and tricks. So this has a cable that is connected to the HomePod and you can't detach it, it's built right in. But at the end of it, unlike Last year's is not a standard plug, but a USB-C outlet. And Apple does give you their 20 watt charger out of the box, um, like you get with the iPad, which is fine and is normal. But if it's too big for your wall or an awkward angle or something like that, if you're putting it behind a dresser, you can use something smaller. So this is Anchor's Power Port 3 Nano, which is an 18 or 20 watt charger, which is much smaller. So you can use something like this. Now, if you use a charger that is not 18 to 20 watts, you will not be able to use it and you'll see a glowing kind of red light in the center, such as if you try to use the USB-C port on your MacBook, you will not be able to play media on this, which is a little disappointing, but just something to note. But what this does mean is that you can use an 18 watt or higher portable power pack, such as this one I have from Zender, and you can use their USB-C ports on here to power your HomePod on the go. Now, of course, you still need to be in Wi-Fi range with, with some exceptions, which I'll get into later. But if you wanted to take this on your back porch, all you have to do is plug it into a power pack like this, and you can take it anywhere where you still have Wi-Fi range, which is great for moving it around for, for parties and, and dinners and things outside or really any circumstance where you just want to move this around the house. And it absolutely sips on battery life. So if you're using a big power pack like this or even a much smaller one, a cheaper one, and I'll link some down in the description, but you'll be able to play media for days because it really is a low power usage device depending on how uh, loud your volume is. Now my next tip, so anyone on your Wi-Fi network has the ability to adjust your Apple Music queue, which is great. So if you're in Apple Music, of course you can see your queue right here. 
But if someone else is on your Wi-Fi network, and of course you have it set that they are allowed to use your HomePod, and they select the HomePod mini like I have here, and again, they're in like the HomePod mini selection mode, they are able to add to the queue. So if you're at a party and you want multiple people to be able to contribute to the queue, people can access the HomePod's queue, which is a really great feature. Next, so technically this feature does work, although it's a little bit iffy. If you needed to use your HomePod without a Wi-Fi connection for maybe you're at a park, um, in a, kind of an odd HomePod situation, or you just moved in somewhere and your Wi-Fi isn't set up, you can create your Wi-Fi hotspot on your iPhone and then connect the HomePod to that Wi-Fi network. Now, it doesn't work perfectly, but if you do this, you can still tell Siri to play music through Apple Music. But if you want to airplay music to the HomePod while it's tethered to your iPhone, you're going to need another device that's also connected to your iPhone to send it to the HomePod. So you need like an iPad or a Mac to airplay music to the HomePod, but you can use a personal hotspot and use that network for your HomePod. So you can make this super portable with a power pack and then a personal hotspot but it does get a little bit tricky depending on what exactly you're trying to do. Now, a cool feature that you can change in the Home app, so if you go into the Home and the Home settings, you can choose who has speaker and TV access to everyone, which means basically anyone who has AirPlay can access this. Anyone on the same network, so anyone with your Wi-Fi. So for me, I'm at school, so this would mean anybody on my campus, and I'm pretty sure even if I was miles away on the same Wi-Fi, I could still play to this and then only people sharing this home, which is like an iCloud feature, and someone has to be sharing the home network, which is pretty secure. But with everyone or anyone on the Wi-Fi network, you can set a password. So if some random person on my school's Wi-Fi wanted to play to this HomePod, they could only do it if they know my Taco's 123 password. So uh, that's a pretty good feature, and it makes it pretty simple if I want to let someone else play media to my HomePod. Now my next tip is just to take care of the white HomePod. It does get pretty dirty, pretty easily. So if you're moving it around a lot, just make sure your hands are clean and you're keeping it somewhere where it's not going to get dust on it. My full-sized HomePod definitely has a couple little dark marks and I'm not a fan of that at all. So you can go for the, the black or the kind of space gray, whatever the darker HomePod is. But the, I do like how clean the white one is, but it does have a little bit of trouble staying clean. Now the previous HomePod did leave white rings on certain finished wood surfaces when it was on the table. Um, but Apple says that this should be fixed to not have that issue. But it wouldn't hurt to put this on some type of coaster um, or, or stand or anything like that that might just keep this kind of silicone surface off of the tabletop so you don't have to worry about it creating stains. Next, if you want to do alarms on this, you can tell Siri to do alarms. So you can say, set an alarm for 7 a.m. And then you also have the access to alarms through this menu. right right here so you can add alarms there and you can also play media from apple music to wake you up too so that's pretty nice too and then you can use a custom volume or whatever volume it was at the time now unfortunately you can't actually customize your alarms from the clock app so you won't be able to kind of integrate homepod alarms with your phone alarms, you're gonna to have to do it separately from the app. All right, next, this is something I really like. You can tell Siri to play different stock white noises, and I think this is great. So as of right now, I'm pretty sure there are seven different noises you can play on this, and they are white, stream, rain, ocean, night, forest, and fireplace, seven. So you can say, play white noise. Here's white noise. And that's just good for studying. It's just simple, kind of staticky background humming. Play stream noises. Very soothing. Play rain noises. This would be a pretty good one to fall asleep to. Play ocean sounds. Play forest sounds. Play night sounds. And my personal favorite, play fireplace sounds. You can also tell Siri to play a sleep timer. Set sleep timer for 30 minutes. Okay. 
I'll stop playing in 30 minutes. Now, if you're listening to a song that you really like, you can tell Siri to add a song to your library by just saying that. You can also tell Siri to add songs next. When you have an iOS 14 or I think 13 or newer device um, and you're playing media, you can transfer it to the HomePod just by putting your device up to the HomePod and it should. Uh, it doesn't work for me because of my, I'm on my school's network and there's some technical difficulties there. Uh, but otherwise you can just put your device up to the HomePod and it should transfer your media. Another cool one is that if you have a song that you know kind of how it goes or a couple lyrics, you can ask Siri to play the song or ask for songs that go like this and then say the lyrics. Siri, what song goes, I walk a lonely road? It's Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. So those are the tips I have for this HomePod video. Let me know which of those were useful. And let me know if you have any other cool tips and tricks for the HomePod Mini. But thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.